This programme is brought to you by Maidstone MG, part of the FG Barnes Group. Welcome along to the opening round of the 2019 MG Trophy Championship, which gets underway at Brands Hatch. Barry is down in the pit garages chatting to Paul Lutey. So, uh, 170 class, a bit of a change in the format this year on the grids. So I believe that they're keeping all the A's together on the grid or the B's, which means that even though your quality time was fantastic, you're actually going to start sort of a little bit further back. Yeah, well, the, the idea is that we were kind of mingling with each other and I guess I was potentially ruining their race and they might have been ruining my race. So I can understand why they wanted to do it, just separate us out. Because at the end of the day, for the overall championship or class wins, whatever, it makes no difference if I beat a 190 or they beat me. So. Final round of the season in 2018, we saw you uh, just have a little dabble in the Chris Brady's car, if I remember rightly, but now you've got them back on the grid. Yeah, so yeah, uh, Chris very kindly let me have a go. Well, Chris and Amy yeah, let me have a shot of their car. So uh, that was fun, and um, that was basically because I'd had such a dreadful year with my brakes and, and my old car that I've just sold, um, and it was just a way to finish up the, the year sort of on a high, and, and it went really well. We came second, and we had a win in the last race, so that was good. So aim for the season must be an obvious one: the podium, the championship. Uh, yeah, that would that'd be nice. That'd be nice, but you know me again. I'm just like have a bit of fun. Eh? If, if I end up winning stuff, then then cool. But I just want a good race, and it looks it looks really good because uh, Sam, who was amazing last year, is bang on it again today, and he's he's beat me in qualifying, which is great. So there's someone that I know for sure we're gonna have a good laugh of this year. Sam, we met last year uh, in your debut season in the 170 class. Good successes then, and now round one qualifying top slot. Uh, yeah, we've got a good start last year to make sure for a proper run for the championship this year and we're off to a good start. So I was saying to Paul before that uh, the grid's a slight change around. You guys are going to start further back even if you've actually got pole position. So that's going to make it a busy first couple of laps. Uh, yeah, hopefully be able to not get stuck behind any of the 160, let's say 190s with the cold tyres, but we'll see what we can do. Chris Bray, great to see you back on the grid. One of our most established MG Trophy drivers. First round of the season and not a bad qualifying. Uh, went OK. I wasn't really comfortable with the car, to be honest. I um, feel a little bit rusty and I didn't feel that we should really have pole, to be honest. But um, maybe we got lucky on that one, I think. Now, we've seen you sort of dip in and out of the championship. You're a very busy guy uh, behind the scenes. Luckily, we've got you for quite a few key rounds, I think, this year. Uh, yeah, I should be at quite a few. It's just so busy at the finish line at the moment because we've got so much going on. And um, yeah, if I can get away from work, I'll definitely be at the track. Now, obviously, the vehicle was out uh, last round last season. You uh, amazingly lent, lent it to somebody, which is more than I would do, and uh, Paul Lutey at that, but he came back in one piece. Yeah, I trust him. Um, it was one of the first times that someone's actually drove my car. So um, it was a new car from Sport and Racing in the day. And yeah, I was really nervous, um, but Paul's one of the best drivers on the track. So yeah, it's sort of come back in the right piece, in one piece, but he done really well. He uh, won the race, and it was good fun to watch. Doug Cole, first round of the season. 2018 season, a little bit mixed uh, here and there, but uh, how are we feeling as we go to this first one? Um, yeah, not too bad. The engine's had a complete refresh. The car's had quite a lot of work done to it um, over the winter. So, yeah, I mean, to be fair, we've had other issues over the winter. We haven't been working on it too much, but uh, yeah, I mean, we did a reasonably good job in qualifying, apart from the last lap when we went around to end up in the gravel trap of Paddock. But apart from that, it's all right, yeah. Now, I saw you a little bit earlier today. Um, under, under the wheel arches of your car there, is it, is it brakes issues or is it just changing tyres, looking at the skies, what's going on? Um, it was a bit of, um, what should we call it, elementary error, schoolboy error, should we say. We went out on um, part warm wets and had the bike brake bias the other way and last toward the last few laps, I thought I'd better turn that back now because the brake started to sort of grab at the front and I went over the bump into paddock and the back front came down all locked up and next minute you're in the kitty litter. So yeah, it's not ideal at sort of 90 odd miles an hour, but there you go. Now we seem to have more drivers doing your class this year and also we've got the 
the young guns coming out, so people like Sam getting some cra cracking times in, so it's uh, pretty much game on for this first one. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, the 190s, we've uh, worked quite hard over the last couple of years to try and increase the numbers, not decrease them. We've got Paul Savage who's come out from the 170s, we've got Mike Harris at Stow come out now, and obviously um, we've got um, Patrick coming out as well. So we also just want to try and persevere and, put, and preserve the 190s because they are the class to have and they're awesome to cars to drive and once you've driven one of them you wouldn't want to drive anything else. Chris Bray coming into line on the front row of the 190s with Ross Macker in white alongside Doug Cole in the light blue and black trimmed car, the white machine of Patrick Booth in fourth. Paul Lutey on the front row of the 170s with Sam Kirkpatrick, the pole sitter. Alongside him, the lights go out, away we go. Superb start by Ross Macker. Great start by Doug Cole, who's trying to round the number two of Chris Bray to go to Paddock Hill Bend. And Cole has cleared Bray and got up into second. And he's going to be having a look here at Ross Macker for the lead as they head up towards Druids for the first time. It's a good, clean start by all concerned. On board with last year's champion, the reigning champion, Graham Ross. He's on the outside line there of Paul Savage. Nothing quite doing. Ross qualifying back in seventh place last year's champion. Got a spinner at the back, which I think is Joseph Dalgano. And that's at Druids. He will recover. Joseph moving up into the 170 class from the standard power from last year, really great to have him moving up. So on board with Patrick Booth, and that's a spinner! And that's Doug Cole! Doug Cole spins, he's in the middle of the track, this is a heart-stopping moment for Doug. Was there a glance there, possibly, as we went past? You can see the frantically waved green flag, that means that on the, the marshal's post before, there will be a frantically waved yellow, and I think the marshalling and the great vision from the drivers saved some possible damage there to Doug Cole's car and indeed anybody else who maybe happened on that moment. But I tell you what, a few cars looking a little bit squirrely, maybe cold tyres, could be an issue at this stage. We're on board with Paul Lutie, he's got into the lead of the 170s. Sam Kirkpatrick running in second in the number three, John Booth! Bang, that was into Tom Butler on the, towards the exit of Druids. Butler in the 55 car on the grass initially, but manages to recover back onto the tarmac. This is the view from Graham Ross, the defending champion, making good progress. Here come the 160s, on board with John Booth. Now it looked like he reacted there to the car in front having a spin. So maybe a little bit of a reaction. From, now we're seeing all sorts of cars going off. That to me is more than a coincidence. I reckon we've got something on track there. Now I'm not sure if any of our cars have put something down on circuit. It may be a legacy from a previous race but it is very slippery out there, and that might be what caused the problem for Doug Cole earlier on. Rejoining the track is John Booth. John, the standard power champion from last year, moving up, like Joseph Delgano, into the 170 category, which is superb. Really great use of the standard power 160 brake horsepower class. You'll see those cars with the white sunstrips, the orange sun strips the cars we're looking at are the more powerful 190 cars and the 170 brake horsepower cars running with yellow and again you can see there are problems going into Surtees and that's Paul Savage near his camera going off and recovering another car having issues as well Tyler Ballard's got his back bumper hanging off so looking there Sam Kirkpatrick is in front and I hesitate because Paul Lutie has dropped back. Problems for Doug Cole recovering, same part of the circuit. Now Paul Lutie here is passed for the lead, through on the inside line into the 160 lead goes Sam Kirkpatrick and Lutie losing three places on that lap so far. Coming up as well is the 19 of Richard Marsh. Richard goes through on the inside line so Paul Lutie is down to fourth position in class. And Samuel Johnston, who came through into second in class there in the blue 24 car, blue and yellow 79, is Adam Jackson. So, Lutie not having the race that he wants. Through goes Robin Walker in the 190, and it's Sam Kirkpatrick who set the pole position time in, well, outright actually, as well as being in the 170 class who is there on board with reigning champion Graham Ross who goes past multi-champion Chris Bray on the inside line. Ross is through, Bray gets demoted. Good move there by Graham Ross. Graham would be happy with that. He won't have been happy with his qualifying performance, but his race is certainly going well. As you heard Doug Cole say, these are wonderful cars 
to drive. They're superb cars to watch as well. Just listen to the engine though. Love these cars to bits. There is Ross Macker, 29 year old from Spalding, who leads this race as we go back into some 170 class action. And Tyler Ballard, teenager from Abingdon, is third there, still got that damage. He might get a black and orange flag for that to uh, come in so it doesn't cause any problems if it falls off. But uh, again, we'll keep an eye on that situation for Tyler. He might well lose it before he gets the flag. Mike Harris in the 37 leading this group. Joseph Delgano going on the inside line. I think it was Joseph who had the spin because he was a little way back at the end of lap number one. Josh Bacon there at the back of this group. The Another teenager comes from Horsham in Sussex and he's running in the 160 class. But back with the leaders in the 170s, Sam Kirkpatrick still there at the moment from the 24 machine of Samuel Johnston. Then Adam Jackson in the 79. 19 car is Richard Marsh. He's in fourth position at the moment. So those three, second, third and fourth in the 160s. And then they've got Doug Cole making a, a superb recovery, Doug Cole. Trying to come through the field and get back up into the top of the uh, race order here. So Doug about to pop a move here on the 79 car, looks down the inside line of Adam Jackson, Jackson sees him, Cole ticks another position off, now goes on the inside line of Samuel Johnston. So Cole making good ground now, and so too is Richard Marsh, who looks down the inside line of Adam Jackson, side by side into Graham Hill, Ben they go, Jackson on the outside line, he's trying to hang on, there's a little bit of door handling between the two of them, but I think that up the inside line, the 19 car's going to get the line here, but holding on to it superbly is Adam Jackson. He had the outside line as they went into Surtees, that converted to the inside at McLaren, and he hangs on to position. All this for a 160-class podium. Great racing here from the Maidstone MG Trophy racing here at Brands Hatch. They're still at it as they cross the line once again as we move into the second half of the race. Challenging now on the inside line, this is for third place in the 170s, and it's Richard Marsh putting the challenge on the inside line of Adam Jackson, goes through, Jackson demoted to fourth, Richard Marsh up into third place in class, ahead of these in second in class is Samuel Johnston in the 24th, there is Samuel just heading out of shot, and the class leader still Sam Kirkpatrick in the light blue number three, so it's teenagers one and two at the moment, there's Doug Cole in 99, there's Sam Kirkpatrick from Samuel Johnston, now this pair still battling for third position in the 170s. Now this weekend all of our runners are wearing black armbands in respect of David Heisman, a name you'll know from racing in the standard class with us. David sadly passed away earlier this year and obviously our thoughts are with David's family and many, many friends and we miss him from the standard class grids. This battle continues up the hill and you can see now closing in once again Adam Jackson trying to take the battle down. I've got a feeling here that second, third and fourth are closing in on Sam Kirkpatrick in the lead. The gap looks smaller than it did on previous laps so we'll just keep an eye on that. We certainly didn't have all four cars in shot earlier on. They were close but not that close. Here's Graham Ross having to work through some traffic. He's still second in, in the race which is led by Ross Macker still. Ross in the 73, nips past the standard class car of Paul Croker. Good to see Paul returning to the championship. Pole position man in the 160s. Josh Bacon runs in second. And Graham closing in now on the race lead and goes past. It's a problem for Ross Macker who goes out of the race. The 73 car into retirement. What a drive we've seen from Graham Ross here. Sure, we've had problems for a couple of drivers, but Graham Ross has come from seventh on the grid. This the opening race of the defence of his title and has come through from seventh into the lead. We've seen Graham do some great races, of course, in the past, particularly on the way to his championship. But this is superb for him. He's going to be delighted if he can maintain that. And of course, it's far too early. 
to say he's won it, but things aren't looking too bad at the moment and things looking pretty good as well in this superb battle in the 170 class because Chris, oh, this is now we're back with Chris Bray. Chris Bray working his way through track. Chris Bray up to second now, goes past Josh Bacon in the 136. The white sun strip telling us that he is, of course, in the standard power class. Paul Croker is now about to be passed by Chris Bray. Difficult part of the circuit here to deal with traffic because if you're being chased, when you've got, first of all, a left and then a right, where do you place the car? Do you do you probably on the inside, you just keep well out of the way. And of course, there's a dice going on for the class lead there. And there's a dice here, which I was going to refer to just before we cut to Chris Bray working his way through traffic that uh, this is now, we've, we've lost Sam Kirkpatrick because this is the battle for the lead. Kirkpatrick is out of the race and Samuel Johnston now leads Class B from Richard Marsh in second and then Adam Jackson in third place. So the podium battle still very much together here, but Sam Kirkpatrick, sadly, I tell you what, he doesn't seem to like opening races of the season, does he, Sam Kirkpatrick? John Booth has been passed by race leader Graham Ross. John still on for some points here in class, and in fact he's running in seventh position in his class as we rejoin the battle for now the lead of Class B. Richard Marsh in the difficult position here because he wants to attack, but he's got to be mindful of the fact that he's got Adam Jackson right behind him. Samuel Johnston setting some quick laps as indeed are they all oh, Chris Bray's got fastest lap at the moment in Class A in car with Patrick Booth once again comes on the inside line here coming up under the Burton power bridge Patrick Booth running third position overall look at that we've got a battle with the, the two standard class cars still together superb racing from them it's such a good entry point into the championship and I heartily recommend this championship to anybody who wants to come racing. Also, anybody maybe who's raced other things before and fancies a very cost-effective, competitive... And when, when we go on board, just listen to the engine notes of these cars. On cue there from Patrick Booth. They sound and look magnificent. It's great racing. Booth, third place overall, goes past Josh Bacon, the Sussex youngster, switches to the outside line. Now, Josh might try and slipstream Booth and close in on the class leader. The two blue cars dicing it out for the standard power class. Booth through on the inside line, climbing up Halewoods Hill in towards Druids. Graham Ross, the outright race leader. Chris Bray second. Patrick Booth is third. Josh Bacon and Paul Croker are 14th and 15th and fighting it out for the standard class lead. What a race they are having. That is absolutely brilliant to see. And they're in the 23 car is Paul Savage, who runs fourth overall in the race. And having looked down the inside line, Class A fifth at the moment is Robin Walker. And he's ahead of that superb battle that we've got going on between Samuel Johnston, Richard Marsh, and indeed Adam Jackson. Paul Savage nips past Josh Bacon, and he's going to do the double pass here because as they go across the line, he takes the inside line on Paul Croker. Paul qualified second in class, but looking good here for a class win on his return to MG Trophy. Climbs up the hill, he's got a little bit of breathing space over Josh Bacon at the moment. Paul Savage still fourth in the race. Joseph Delgano, who's recovered from that spin earlier on in the race, is running in sixth position in class, so very good recovery for Joseph Delgano, who, who moves up like several other drivers, moves up a class, which you can do. You can move from the 160s into 170s. You can do 160 to 190 if you, if you want to. But Joe moving up in, from the standard power class into the 170s as we ride on board with John Booth. Once again in the number 50 car, the black machine there, centre shot. Paul Lutey not looking happy in this race, but... Whatever problem he's got, Paul Lutie is nursing that car home. He knows that to nurse the car home, he'll get some points. Looking on the inside line now is Joseph Delgado. Paul gives him room. Again, that superb engine note from Patrick Booth. Powers his way through on the inside line. Now switches to the outside and he's about to pass Delgado. This is a super move by the 33. 
Patrick Booth, 190 brake horsepower car. You just got to love the sound of them, haven't you? Absolutely superb. And as we've seen, some super racing to kick the season off here on the Indy circuit at Brands Hatch. Still Graham Ross out front. So it's Ross, Bray, Booth, Paul Savage, Robin Walker in fifth position. We're watching Patrick Booth in third place at the minute, just ahead of John Booth there in the black car. And uh, John just giving an acknowledgement because through on the inside line goes Paul Savage in fourth place there in the 23. So Booth, another driver who moved up, uh, was uh, six in the 170s in uh, 2018. Patrick Booth and Chris Bray hitting it all. All sorts of problems there, but Bray challenging Graham Ross. He's closed in on Ross in these last few laps, and what a battle we've got on for the lead here. So Bray challenging hard on Long Cooper straight. I tell you, Ross has had things far from easy in this. Two champions fighting it out together here. Former champion chasing defending champion Mike Harris pulls clear, lets them through. The battle for the lead now going through clearways. Coming into Clark curve. Now, I think we're going to get another lap out of this. It's a 20 minute race on board with Graham Ross, who will cross the line now. And I can tell you the 20 minutes is up now. But uh, So we've managed to squeeze another lap. I'm not sure whether Graham Ross will want another lap being challenged by Chris Bray. So a late challenge by Bray, the pole position man on the last lap. And this is how close they are. Clearways for the last lap. I don't think Bray is close enough to make a move. He may well get a run. He wasn't particularly wide into clearways there, but it looks like Graham Ross is going to take the opening win of the season. We're on board with him. Watch for the checkered flag. Watch for the reaction as well. There's the checker. Ross takes the win from Chris Bray. Four tenths of a second was the gap. Patrick Booth here will take third place. Patrick a few seconds behind, but he will complete the outright podium here. Good run down the Brabham straight. There's the chequered flag for Patrick Booth, who takes a podium on his debut in the 190s, but it was Graham Ross that took the win. Richard Marsh winning Class B eventually, ahead of Samuel Johnston and Adam Jackson. And Josh Bacon came through to win Class C, the standard power class, ahead of Paul Croker. So a good late race move for him. Here's confirmation of the result. Ross, Bray and Boo, the head of Full Savage and Robin Walker. Richard Marsh, Samuel Johnston, Adam Jackson, the podium in Class B from Tom Butler and James Cole. Then Joseph Delgano, John Booth and Paul Lutie, head of Josh Bacon, Paul Croker. Tyler Ballard, Doug Cole and Mike Harris completing the finishers. Fastest laps, Chris Bray, Samuel Johnston in Class B and Joshua Bacon, fastest lap in Class C. Graham, 29 season got underway, race one and top position, not bad at all. Yeah, pretty happy with that, I have to say. I wasn't expecting it with qualifying, uh, putting slicks on on a damp track, taking a gamble, it didn't really pay off, but, uh, well, it was dry for the race and I uh, just took the opportunities when I could. A couple of guys fell by the wayside, which helped my cause, but I can't really complain, you know, I, it's, it, you've got to take the chances when they're there, so that's what I did. Richard Marsh, uh, class winner there in the first race of the season for the Class Bs. Um, fantastic race, good results. Um, not without some trials and errors going through though. Yeah, it was a um, really fantastic race, really enjoyed it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, collected another competitor as he was spinning, but um, minor damage hopefully to both cars. We're both be out for the next race. Um, but yeah, just fantastic race the whole way through. I started 10th, finished first. So. Happy. Joshua, we met at the end of the 2018 season where you just sort of put your toe in the water, tested to see whether the championship was for you or not, and uh, first time out, won your class. Yeah, it was really good actually. Um, last season was good. Uh, we had Alton where we came, got two thirds, and Snet where we got first, and then DNF because I blew up the engine. But we've got a new engine this season, hoping to keep that intact. And have you found it in race one? I mean, quite tricky conditions out there, quite a packed grid. Yeah, it was really packed, quite a lot of action as well, a lot of uh, fluids on the track that wasn't noticed, but everyone managed to make their way through it. Um, battle with Paul is also in the, in the race, so that was good.
Becky, great to see you here at Brands Hatch. Now, you represent the chosen charity for the uh, MG Trophy, uh, Ret UK. Now, just tell us a little bit about Ret UK, what it's about, and uh, how it came together. Okay, so Ret UK is a charity that's been running now for about 30 years and that supports families affected by Ret syndrome, which is a very rare neurological disorder. It mainly affects females, one in 12,000 females. And the really devastating part of this disorder is that you think you'd have a normal child, so they develop normally for the first year or 18 months, and then they regress. And that can happen overnight or can happen over a period of months or a couple of years. But in my case, my daughter, who's now 24, um, at 11 months she regressed overnight, so she lost the ability to make words, she didn't have any hand use, um, and she really lost all her ability in terms of motor skills as well, so she couldn't crawl, walk, or do anything that a normal toddler of that age could do, which was hugely distressing. What RET UK does is actually is there for the families at the point of diagnosis. So when you're living with a rare disorder like Rett syndrome, um, what you actually need is information, advice and support. So being involved with the MG uh, Trophy Championship raises awareness, but from there how can people get involved more, how can they find out more information and offer more support? Okay, I mean it's really good to follow us on social media, so the usual platforms of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, our website is www.retuk.org loads of information there about how you get involved whether that's just through volunteering or whether you're happy to do some fundraising for us and just raise awareness for us just even if you were sharing our posts on those different instagram platforms etc really makes a difference because it is something people generally not been heard of unless you're actually touched by it personally or through family friends so raising awareness is just as important for us as actually raising funds now, being associated with this championship, uh, we've seen quite a bit of support from the drivers in the paddock. We've, we've got your logos on the car as well, so it, it's all good, isn't it, really? Yeah, it's fantastic to have this support. It's just what we need. It's really hard to actually get this kind of exposure, if you like, for a small charity like us. So to have the stickers on the car, to have this opportunity to talk to people today, to even hear the, the Tenoy announcement and, and part of the race build-up and everything, it's fantastic because, actually, when you hear how devastating Rett syndrome is and you imagine that's your child or your, your grandchild who could be affected by that disorder it's actually really shocking um, so it's fantastic to have this exposure and we'll be hugely appreciative to the MG Trophy Championship today. Patrick we've seen you out in this championship and you've had continued success growing up that ladder now we've moved to the 190s and a podium. Yeah a fantastic first result um, so pleased with that we had qualifying this morning I was actually really pleased to be fourth in qualifying uh, out of eight and uh, at the front of us and then after a dreadful dreadful start I was basically right at the back so I had to, a lot of hard work to do I'm afraid. Great way to start the season, great way in the, in the new class, I mean how different is it? It's very different, I mean I came into racing three years ago to just learn how to race and the 170s is very very different to a road car or the 160s, the 190s is very different again, the margins are so much tighter, you've got to be so much more precise, it's much less forgiving so uh, but I'm enjoying the challenge I've got to say. Sam, great to see you back on the grid this year. That was a good result. Yeah, really. It was a bit of a surprise, to be honest. Uh, you know, we were sat on the grid in P3, which we were like, oh, my God. And then the lights went out, didn't really get a very good start. And then it just so much happened. It was just a case of let's see what we can do and picking them off one by one. And then we were in first and counting down the laps, hoping that you know, we could get to the finish in one piece and, you know, we'll take a second. It was so close between all three of us. So, yeah, amazing result for us. Paul, we haven't caught up with you for some time. We, we saw you a little bit last season, but now we see you this season moving up a class into the 190. So tell us about the change, why the change and the development of the car. Yeah, the um, primary change was trying to achieve the, uh, the impossible as regards going motor racing and keeping costs as low as possible. Yeah. So reliability on the 190 uh, is a, a really good feature, um, simply because of the fact it's designed as a high performance engine. Um, whether it gets used in that way by a lot of people is a different matter, but you've got something which is capable and not running on the absolute limit, which can be the case with the, with the lower classes. Uh, and I was finding um, a situation where I wasn't enjoying my racing because of the fact I was having to protect the car. Um, restricted budget, as with a lot of people, but at the same time, you know, I do enjoy racing when I can race, you know, 
with everybody on an equal playing field, which is, is what we try and do. And so I, I thought, well, you know, if you've got the capability to drive it, which I, I've done in the past, why not go for the higher level? And you know, you're out away from the the the, uh, the mass ranks, and um, you know, you've got a, 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 a nice race by yourself with the with the 190 group. Now, race one out of the way, um, quite an active one for you. Yeah, sort of uh, got a little bit. I've got a bit of a tank slapper on and sort of collected by a few other cars. But I mean, there was a bit of oil or some sort of substance down that didn't really help. But yeah, I tried, tried my best to get back, but I was just falling behind. So yeah. Okay. So we had a bit of uh, body damage there, obviously, as we were going around. Thankfully, it sort of held on, and now it's uh, sort of looking back in its normal shape. So, what, how are we set for race two? Uh, well, you always want to win, so hopefully have a win, but we'll see what happens. So no more damage, hopefully not. So. Well, like I say, if we rewind back to 2018, we had some bad luck, but then we had some consistently good times, so hopefully got the bad luck out of the way. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, yeah. Doug Cole, outright pole position from Chris Bray. The 170 class headed by Sam Kirkpatrick from Paul Lutey, Joshua Baker and Paul Croker form the 160 standard class grid. Away we go, lights out very quick from Ross Macar. Good start from Doug Cole. Chris Bray is in second place at the moment, but being challenged, he's in the blue car. And he's down to third. Ross Macar goes up ahead of him. On board with John Booth, who gets it sideways at Paddock Hill Bend. He's got a lot of cars ahead of him, but he's got a few behind, and that was a potentially worrying moment. Hopefully no fluids down this time around. Chris Bray on the outside line, Doug Cole the leader, and that's Ross Macar looking on the outside line in 73 and challenging for second place. I should say, really, that Chris Bray, problems there for Adam Jackson. I should say that Chris Bray was challenging for second position and riding the outside line, he gets it. Ross Macar down to third, then it's Patrick Booth in fourth place, fifth position, the 77 car of Robin Walker, and more work to do in this race from Graham Ross, who once again lines up seventh on the grid. And you can see him at the back at the moment of the orange Sunstrip cars, the 170 class led by 69, Paul Lutey, with Tom Butler in second position in car number 55, the blue 55, but it's Doug Cole who leads the second race. This uh, grid formed by the second fastest lap time from the qualifying session, not based on the result of race one, which is superb if you had a good qualifying but didn't do so well in race number one. It's a good format, works in so many areas of British motorsport. And look at that, a really good, tidy, well-prepared line of cars going along Cooper Strait, headed by Doug Cole. Graham Ross looking to make a pass here, finds a gap on the inside line of Robin Walker. Slingshot through on the inside line. I didn't think there was room, but he has done it. Paul Lutey, meanwhile, starting to get stuck in, having a look at Patrick Booth. On the inside line is Lutey, looks across because he's mindful that he's got the second position 170 car in close proximity as well. Actually, Tom Butler, having said that, is a length or so behind at the moment. On board with James Cole, looking at the back end of Sam Kirkpatrick, who had a clutch failure in race one. The other retiree, of course, an extremely high-profile one, being Ross Mackay, who had throttle body screws sucked into the engine. That's why we saw him retire. You remember the point where Graham Ross went past him for the lead. So both of them back out and racing in this one. Very close out front, there is Paul Lutey, Tom Butler, third place is Sam Kirkpatrick, and a spin on track there! Again, we, oh, I was going to say, I hope we'd get away, Tom Butler spins out from second position in the 170s, and are now a static 19 car of Richard Marsh, John Booth squeezes through on the inside line. Car still stuck there at the moment, we might get a safety car intervention here, it's uh, about halfway round the lap from where the cars are here so the officials have got time to assess the situation they don't have to make a snap decision but the car is still parked there we've got marshals on on site already wonderful work by the marshals great work by the race officials here safety cars out and it just calms things down it doesn't close the field up because things were already very very close as richard marsh's car is towed to safety Ready to go back racing here. The safety car pulls into pit lane. It's Doug Cole leading. Chris Bray is in second place. Ross Macker, 
who is looking for a win, having led the first race of the day and then having to retire. And the three of them go into Paddock Hill Bend. Graham Ross looking at the inside line here of Patrick Booth. Chris Bray was looking for the lead as well. And look how committed Graham Ross is on that inside line. Makes up another place. Ross back are busy challenging Chris Bray. Chris, of course, has got that age-old situation of having to charge from second, looking ahead, but also looking behind. Patrick Booth gets a good view of the champion. Graham Ross immediately ahead of him. So the lead trio together, this is the view that Doug Cole wanted, every single car in the race behind him. And Doug had had his problems in race one, and you heard him being very honest about his qualifying, but Doug got his car home to 17th in race one, which doesn't sound great, but it was six in class, so useful points for Doug Cole, and that's what counts at the end of the season. As ever, great onboard footage from Paul Lutey in the class lead. He's got Sam Kirkpatrick right with him there, the light blue three car. And they are also getting involved in the Class A machines, which they will do. The lesser experienced drivers, perhaps, in Class A, or the drivers whose cars may be not performing to their liking, particularly on a short circuit like Brands Hatch, they may well get involved. Rossback has a little look for second position there on the inside of Chris Bray, but the early stages of this race here at Brands settling down very nicely indeed. We've got James Cole in third place in the green car and Doug Cole starting to just edge away a little bit from Ross Macker with Chris Bray in that third place now starting again it's deja vu for him because he's got Graham Ross starting to close in on him and starting to put pressure and see if he can outfox him again in this race on board with Graham Ross though the defending champion superb view the man who sewed up an incredibly close championship last year. Might remember the round at Alton Park where we thought things were heading west for him. Here's Doug Cole again. Look how close. Ross Macker is really challenging for the leads. They come up Halewoods Hill now into Druids. Seventy-seven, Robin Walker, he's running in sixth place at the moment, so seventh position, which we're looking at immediately behind. Paul Lutey, still the class leader for the 170s. Sam Kirkpatrick in light blue is second, and then James Cole in green running third in class. Kirkpatrick getting closer. Now, Paul Lutey here, if he's feeling brave, may well have a go at Robin Walker for sixth position. We heard that the grids now separate the 190s from the 170s and the 160s all starting in their respective groups but inevitably some of the faster 170 cars particularly in varying conditions could close in on some of the 190 machines as we're seeing here so it's an intriguing battle with Lutey lights ablaze good battle going on immediately behind as well coming up the hill and currently I think third in class is Adam Jackson for the 170s so Paul Lutey is going to be looking ahead thinking about how he's going to deal with Robin Walker if he has to deal with Robin Walker in that more powerful car there's Joseph Dalgano good recovery in race one to six in class 11th overall but six in class now as Lutey goes wide here on the outside line it could leave the door open and yes it does they're coming through is Sam Kirkpatrick they're side by side for the 160 class lead here and the wheat sheaf garage car is coming through has he got his nose in front will Paul Lutey be able to hold on on the outside line Lutey's still got his nose in front as they cross the line but he's going to have to see it here going into Paddock Hill Bend and Sam Kirkpatrick, you have to say, Paul Lutey was keen to get past the Class A car, couldn't do it, it left the door open. And Paul Lutey will now have to fight back on board with Graham Ross. Graham in fourth position overall, race one winner. So he's come up from seventh to fourth, it's Doug Cole still the leader. Ross Mackar in second place after the DNF in race one. Chris Bray is third, we're on board with Chris. And you can see Patrick Booth still in the mix as well. We look back, here comes Robbie Walker. Paul Lutey having a, a good look again at trying to get back on top, as is James Cole as well trying to get in the mix too. Super stuff from our MG Trophy racers. Samuel Johnston is with Adam Jackson. We saw just towards the back of shot, but it's a five-car battle for the lead. A little bit of a gap at the moment for Doug Cole. 
sixth position the result in class for Doug Cole in race number one. Patrick Booth busy trying to close in on the quintet. His first time racing in this class, of course, this weekend. And a good performance from him. His brother John moving up from the standard power class into the 170. So both of the Booth brothers making a step up in terms of power. Here comes Chris Bray, looks to the outside line of Ross Macar here. Can he go for the sweep round the outside? He's got to be careful not to leave the door open, though, because Graham Ross, the champion, will be keen to look down the inside line. Chris Bray, as a former champion, knows that. Comes across, hugs the inside there, going up to Druids. Consolidates third position, so it's still Doug Cole out front. Ross Macar in second, third place is Chris Bray in the number two car, the Cambridgeshire racer. Here comes Lutie, has a look on the inside line to re-challenge for lead position, but Sam Kirkpatrick is holding on there. These two battling might allow Robin Walker to get away. Now, is that a good thing? It probably is a good thing for Sam Kirkpatrick because if they're slowing each other up, it enables the 77 car to get away a little bit more and then maybe, I guess, Sam Kirkpatrick can get his head down and try and pull away again. Luti setting a faster laps uh, of, of the two contenders for the 170 class at the moment, but three-way battle for second overall. Graham Ross at the back of the trio, slightly wider line into Druids for Ross. This could give him more momentum elsewhere. Maybe a little bit checked up, not checked up by Chris Bray, but he got very close to Chris Bray there. So maybe lost any momentum he had. He might have a, a little look at the inside line, which he does here, coming up in towards Surtees. It's going to try and go through. Can't quite do it. Still Ross Macker. Ross now, in fact, is getting closer to Doug Cole. And again, you saw Graham Ross having a look on that outside line. Still trying to deal with Chris Bray. Talking about John Booth earlier on, and there is John. A very quick look at last year's standard power champion. Standard power class again being contested in this race. Josh Bacon from Paul Croker at the present time. Coming back from Chris Bray. That is one fearsome corner paddock, Hill Bend, and you come downhill. Doesn't seem to phase any of these drivers though, and Doug Cole with his lights on. Should he get into any traffic? We're a little bit later on in the day now. And Doug starting to come under pressure here from the 73 machine you can see the class a cars coming into shot now as well sorry the class c cars the standard power machines coming into proximity of the race leaders as paul Lutie continues his relentless chase of sam kirkpatrick again has a look at graham hill bend he can't do anything about kirkpatrick there so they go along the straight the race leaders having passed the standard power class cars now onto the last lap and doug cole He's still the race leader, Ross Macar in second. There's another car ahead though, so could possibly be an issue. No, it's no problem, it's Josh Bacon that they go past. Josh running 15th overall, Paul Croker is 16th. Tom Butler still running in 17th place, incidentally, but uh, Josh Bacon, the blue car with the yellow bonnet you saw past there, still leading the standard power class, but it's a quartet for lead position. This has been a game of cat and mouse, a game of chess in motorsport terms as well between these four. And Ross Macker putting the pressure on Doug Cole, who is soaking up the pressure. Chris Bray, did he have to check up there? He's still got the defending champion, Graham Ross, right behind him as well. Ross, I reckon, could be top point scorer on the day and possibly lead the championship, but leading the field and taking the checkered flag here in race two is Doug Cole. Ross Macker second. Chris Bray is third. Graham Ross is in fourth place. This is the battle for the 170 class, and it is still Sam Kirkpatrick... Kirkpatrick, he's in eighth position, Paul Lutie is ninth, but that's the overall position, it's the class win that counts, and it's Kirkpatrick that takes it after relentless pressure from Paul Lutie. Doug Cole, though, the overall winner from Ross Macar and Chris Bray, they complete the outright podium here in race two at Brands. Graham Ross fourth ahead of Patrick Booth, then Paul Savage, Robin Walker in seventh, Sam Kirkpatrick, as we said, winning Class B from Paul Lutie and James Cole. 11th, fourth in class, goes to Adam Jackson from Samuel Johnston and John Booth. Tyler Ballard, 14th, ahead of Joshua Bacon, Paul Croker. 
their first and second respectively in the standard power class. Tom Butler completing the runners in 17th position. Fastest laps to Chris Bray, Paul Lutey and Paul Croker. Doug, fantastic uh, end to the weekend there for you. Yep, that's much better than this morning. Uh, don't know what happened this morning. It was just so slippery. Um, and we smashed the door in, but really weren't going out because the door lock broke itself and Colin and the mate managed to fix it. So it was on it and on pole and I thought, I've just got to try and make it, but they didn't have to make it difficult. I mean, Ross, they pushed really hard. I was making it as slow as I could without going off and it was methodical. It's quite easy to defend around here if you know where you're going. Um, I just wanted to win desperately for everybody. It was really cool. I was going to say, um, when you're at the front, it's very hard. I mean, they were keeping the pressure on lap after lap after lap. Yeah, it is, but if you can just keep sensible and watch it, there was three places I was looking every time, and every time I was gaining a little bit out of clearways, out of Graham Hill, and so you had the gap then, so you knew you the next corner, you were fine. And I say I had a good run out of clearways, and that mean they couldn't have a dig at Paddock, which means you're quicker through Paddock. They were catching up into Drury, because so it's probably a bit slow into there, but I was just doing what I needed to do to get round, hit the apexes, hit the markers, not do anything silly, not chuck it off and win the race. It didn't seem a long time since you saw the flag. Yeah, I mean, the thing was, we went over I mean, after the safety car, the, the counter went out, so the counter's still saying 17 minutes, 50 seconds. Oh, wow. So we, I was looking, oh, well, it's, it's got to change at some point, and it didn't. And it every time we come round, you could, I thought it's got to be about 16, 17 now, and then the safety car, it's got to be sometime. And then when the checker flag, it was, it was just brilliant. You know, I really worked hard for that, enjoyed it as well. Ross, challenging race, Doug didn't make that easy, he was defending all the way there, but uh, and even rain coming towards the end there, but uh, good points, good position. Yeah, I was really happy with the result after the first race DNF. We came back strong, uh, no one made it easy, everyone was fighting, and Doug was just the, the biggest roadblock of all. He was fantastic, didn't make one mistake. I've got to hand it to him, I was hoping he would, but he didn't, and he had the legs on me through clear ways, and I couldn't attack him into paddock, so that's how it worked out, but great race from Doug. How's it been on tyres? Tyres have been mentioned a lot this weekend. How's it been for you? Um, I, thought, I think they're quite good. We've moved to a, a different brand, and. They've been performing well, they stay consistent throughout the race, so I thought they're good. Paul, some great racing there, a bit of a mixed weekend for you, and you certainly had to uh, push on a little bit in that race. Yeah, I got um, I got a cracking start again, and then it was just sort of hanging, you know, hanging about the back in the 190s, um, and then I just watched things unfold behind me, and then uh, basically I didn't have a rest from start to finish. A lot of tactical driving out there, a lot of blocking, a lot of racing lines changing, especially as it went on because the, the weather was starting to change, a few drops of rain at the end there. Yeah, that was quite good actually because um, it was sort of a test of who had the biggest, you know, you know, at the top of Paddock Hill Bend, you know, the first lap when it was maybe raining a little bit. Um, so sometimes, for example, when I was mainly racing and Sam there, he'd be maybe a bit braver than I was and then maybe I'd be braver than him at the next corner, so it made it a bit, a bit more interesting. Overall, though, pretty good weekend. I, do you know what? I can't complain. I mean, it's a brand new car. First time it's been driven fast. To come away with a second is pretty good, you know? Sam, weekends don't actually start the season much better than that, really. Yeah, well, the first race wasn't ideal as the clutch broke, but the second race was a bit better. I was going to say, and uh, Paul was on your case most of the time there, but actually couldn't get through. Yeah, it's quite a hard track to overtake, so there's only a few places where you can overtake, and I was able to cover those, so all right. Great impetus as we go to the next round, good for points as well. Uh, I mean, obviously top of your class there. Was it getting tricky towards the end? Uh, yeah, at the end of the race, I thought Paul was going to find a way past, and there's a little bit of rain as well, which I thought might cause problems, but managed to win. <laughs> Here's the table following Brands, just a point separating Graham Ross and Chris Bray and Doug Cole, who are joined second. Class B, headed by Samuel Johnston from Adam Jackson. We'll see you next time at Donington Park.